todos. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr., the Director of Marketing and Communications here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, your friendly neighborhood museum right across from Olvera Street, temporarily closed during these pandemic times, but soon to reopen, we hope. But for now, we're here in our, what we're calling En Casa con la Plaza Zoom Sessions. Thank you to all who are joining us on Zoom or on Facebook Live. I'm sure you're out there ready to have a lot of fun today with a really dynamic, bubbly, talented, local chef, Tirsa Para. But before I get Hola. started, before I get started on, on, uh, on with the show, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing here at La Plaza. As you know, we're closed along with a lot of other cultural organizations, temporarily closed. So instead of you coming to us, as you so loyally have been doing for the past nine years that we've been open, we're now bringing our tradition of presenting the best of LA Latino history, art, and culture directly to you at your homes at your workplaces, on your phone, on your pad, on your laptop, on your, on your desktop. These are En Casa con la Plaza sessions. They feature some of the community's leading thinkers, authors, performers, chefs, educators, and others, bringing you culturally rich entertainment and learning to families and individuals. We're using Zoom. As you know, a lot of you have been using Zoom lately for meetings, for get-togethers, for, for just getting together and, and talking to one another and seeing each other, which is really great during these times. And we're also making these available on Facebook Live. I'd like to uh, thank our sponsors, Walmart and AERP California, who have been very kind to have been bringing these sessions to you for the past four weeks. This is the fourth. And we've had some marvelous guests, uh, including... Uh, Lalo Alcaraz, Gustavo Arellano, David Hayes Bautista. But on Mondays, we've devoted it to La Plaza Cocina, our soon-to-be built museum and teaching kitchen right across the street from our La Plaza site there at La Plaza Village. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Jimena Martin, our Senior Curator of Programs and Educations, who will be taking over this session from here. Please leave comments if you can. If there, you see that little button there where it says chat, you could chat with us, Q&A on Facebook Live, leave comments. I'll be passing those over to Jimena. Jimena will be having a conversation with Tirsa. You're going to see these are great sessions. If this is your first time, welcome. Now we welcome Jimena. Mil gracias, Alberto. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for organizing these uh, programs here in Casa con la Plaza. But today we have um, Tirsa, Tirsa Fara from Tirsa's Cafe. Um, her restaurant is right down the street from La Plaza. And we were so fortunate to have her do one of our um, public programs, our salsa events. And so she created this beautiful La Plaza pole. And so as we were thinking about who can we bring in to invite folks who've been to La Plaza, we thought of Tirsa. Um, Tirsa, she's always loved to cook, um, always test drive recipes with her families. And then eventually that passion led to her going to school to the Cordon Bleu Art School. And after she, be, after she graduated, she started cooking, um, making sales with her friends, suggesting folks to put her little menu up in the, um, in the office space, in the coffee space, and slowly orders started coming in, coming in, so much so that she even had her dad come in and help her uh, deliver these, um, these, the food items that she was preparing. Eventually then she just started working at a restaurant and part of it was menu development. As she was developing the menu, she says, you know what, I could do this. So her and her partner in crime, Steve, got together and opened up their restaurant. As Steve says, Mexican Cafe, here off of Cesar Chavez, three minutes away from La Plaza. So I'd like to pass it on, open the kitchen to Ms. Tirsa so she can tell us her voyage and show us what she'll be making today. She'll be making Mexican rice and also a cilantro rice. So without further ado, Ms. Tirsa, please. Hola, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited. Um, there is, what we're doing today is gonna be simple rice but it's not so simple to us latinos because we take 
our rice very, very seriously. And so do I here at Steve Sus Kitchen. Um, I see you did your homework, Jimena, by uh, looking me up. And um, that is basically the story of how Steve Sus came to be. It was a passion project way before Steve came in the picture. I was the daughter in, um, I was the daughter with four kids. So we had three boys and it was me. And a lot of the responsibility um, to cook was on me. Little did I know that I actually loved it and kind of took charge in making a lot of the family meals for my family, which is where I got the critic approval. You know, your family is brutal. So if you get your family's approval, you're like, huh, maybe I'm onto something here. Um, and my love for cooking just kind of started there. I loved to see the happy faces, um, the happy bellies. You know, it was just a, a, a passion for me. And that's when the seed came and said, hey, I think I want to take this all the way. Um, and then I met Steve along the way and our goals, our mindset, our hearts were aligned and we have brought it now to this stage in the game. And here we are serving you guys Monday through Friday uh, and Sunday. And it couldn't be any better. This coronavirus or no coronavirus, we're, we're um, dedicated to getting through this and the support of our um, of our customers, of our longtime customers, family, friends, it's just, it's overwhelming and it's helping us navigate through these wavy, wavy uh, ocean waters. So thank you guys for having me again. I can't wait to show you guys our arroz. I'll be showing you our arroz mexicano and our cilantro rice that we actually serve and use at the restaurant. So um, I guess I'm giving away one of my top secrets. Please share away, dear. So show us how it's done. Okay. So, um, by the way, I gave a recipe. Did the recipe, did people get the recipe or? After, when the session's over, as a thank you, we send the, the recipe after the fact. Oh, okay. So you guys will have a recipe, but if uh, my camera guy is my husband, Steve, say hi, Steve. He is uh, recording me and I'm going to have him follow me over here. I have um, separated everything. I'm gonna make two batches of rice. So we have two cups of rice per container. What type and of I, rice are you using, Tirsa? I am using jasmine rice. It's a okay. long grain rice. Um, and it's just what I prefer to use. I feel like it leaves it um, more intact. The rice is, is whole by, by the time it's done cooking. So I just like it. I feel it looks prettier, it tastes better. Um, and it's my rice of choice. We are also, I have, so two cups of rice uh, in each container. We have five cups of water. The ratio to water is very different because some people say one cup of rice, you put two cups of water. I do That's what one I do. cup of rice. Yeah, I do one cup of rice, two and a half cups of water. Uh, so, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, which is very different because most people are gonna be like, but I promise it's gonna come out good. So we have the five cups of rice here, which I have already means and claws. We have tomato sauce over here that will be used for the Mexican rice. And then the cilantro rice, I have the lemon here and the cilantro chopped up in the fridge that will be used for the cilantro lime rice. So <clears throat> everything before I start rice, I always have everything ready because it's very fast. You have to watch your rice so it doesn't burn. And once it's ready, that's when it's go time. If it goes over a certain point, it's just gonna be like burned rice. So, um, let me, oh, let me finish going over the ingredients. So you're gonna two cups of rice, the water, the tomato sauce, some limones, um, salt. I, at the restaurant, use vegetable base, which makes all of our rice um, vegetarian slash vegan. Um, so I only use vegetable base and salt, therefore it's vegan friendly for a lot of our community. So we're gonna get started. We have two pots here. I'm gonna do them both at the same time because I'm a little pro like that. I'm just kidding. I just, it's just faster and easier for me. So I'm turning on my heat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Follow me, Steve. Turning on our heat. I don't know how to use this one. Oh, you're heating up the pots and pans here. Just a little um, history of rice. Um, rice has been domesticated for the past 10,000, 14,000 years ago. All rice comes from China, the Pearl River Valley in China, in fact. 
And there's two different subspecies. There is from the tropical regions and also part of East Asia. And the third one, believe it or not, was later in Africa. Um, rice, as much as it's part of our, of our diet in the Latino community, it's not indigenous. And um, that came through, believe it or not, through in Mexico, through Veracruz. About uh, 1520, when the Spanish came over, they landed and brought in rice. Now, again, talking about where rice came from in the North African and the Moors and the Spanish. So, you know, like the Moors at one point dominated Spain. And so with that, those, you know, when one group takes over the other, food traditions also carry on and they kind of take that. So with that said, with the Spanish, they brought the rice to Veracruz on over. And another, Wait, yeah. Another interesting point I found was, and it, sadly, in, in addition to the food exchange, there was also the transportation of African slaves, uh, more so from, from West Africa. And again, here's that point. So the African folks had been working and cultivating rice since the 13th century coming over. So I feel, again, we have this Afro-Latino exhibition right now. Again, it's a combination of that. And so I feel with this uh, conversation, it's uh, their contribution to the culinary world in Latin America. Okay. How to use, how to, they, you know, besides bringing the rice, but also the main thing is how to cultivate the rice and yeah, how yeah. we use it so much today. Yeah, and okay, so my rice, my oil is heated up. I'm about to put two cups into each pot. It's going to take uh, just a minute for it to actually start doing something in there. I added about five, you know, about maybe three and a half to four tablespoons of oil. Um, you can use um, any oil you like. You can use canola, you can use coconut, you can use soybean, you can use avocado, rapeseed. It's your, your, your preference, really. We have a question, Tisa, from Socorro yes. Pantoja. Uh, okay. How high is the flame? I have it on really high. I have it all the way high because I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to watch it and I'm going to take care of it. When I am at home doing multiple things, I will have it on medium heat only because I'm not going to be 100% attentive to it. So, yeah, but right now I am. Right now I am. So I have it on full blast. Excellent. Thank you. Tisa? I'm using soybean oil. Soybean oil. Yeah. Is there a preference for soybean oil versus olive oil or regular corn oil or grape um, oil? Uh, there, there, and people have their preferences. A lot of people don't like to use canola oil or soybean oil. Mm -hmm. um, I, I prefer soybean oil just because it's easier for me to get for the restaurant. Okay. Um, but you can use whatever you'd like. I know, I know olive oil burns a little bit more. Okay. Um, so I want to show you guys in here. It's oh, already okay. starting, it's already starting to cook as you can see. Um, so I have to watch the sides, make sure nothing is burning. I've and got two questions for you. Okay. Could we use brown rice? And the other million dollar um, question is, should you wash your rice? Oh, I do not wash my rice. That's another uh, another thing I, I have heard of people doing. They wash their rice. I don't wash my rice. I feel like okay. when I wash my rice, it just comes out a little bit more mushier and stickier. Okay. And again, I'm I'm going for that fluffy, like long, like intact rice. Mm -hmm. And in this process, the way you're doing it um, is, could you do it with brown rice? Um. I think I did it once in my life with brown rice mm -hmm. and, and brown rice takes forever to cook. Um, and it's just a whole different, it has a whole different type of body to it. Mm -hmm. Could you do it? Yes, you could do it. Is it going to be as delicious, uh, as traditional? Probably not, but it is going to be healthier for you. Um, I've done it once and I didn't like it. So I haven't retried again. But um, if you try it, please let me know. I would say, yes, you can. It just okay. takes longer to cook. 
if it's okay. not the same process. Mm -hmm. So I'm switching them because this, this flame is higher and I'm trying to get them even. If you can tell over here, this one is more brown already, kind of getting to the color I want. And this one is still a little bit white. So I just switch them so that I can, they can both cook evenly and be done at the same time. You know, our kitchens are funny like that. One works better than the other and we all have our favorite like burner. So I'm lowering this one again, just so it, until it can be right this one. This one cooks higher. But if you can tell over here, this is what we want. It's almost there. Can you tell the golden brown that it is? There's a gold, it's getting nice golden brown. Now that I switch, switch this one, this one is almost there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is, this one is ready to go. I'm going to, this will be for the cilantro rice. Follow me, Steve. I'm going to add the water to that one now because the, this one is not far behind. So. Okay, I'm going back to full flame. How much rice do you go through a week there, Steve Sam? Oh man, I would, it's not that much, but um, I would say maybe like 50 to 100 pounds tops. Wow. So that one, we're gonna leave it working right now. Let's focus on this one. This one is almost ready. Also, um, some people, a lot of, everybody cooks differently. Everybody has their favorites. Some people like to put um, carrots, corn, um, peas in rice. Mm -hmm. I personally don't. I like my rice just like that, unless I'm eating like fried rice or something. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna put any of that. Okay, check out the rice right here. This is pretty much, I got maybe like 30 more seconds. Can you guys see the brown? Beautiful. We have a question from Nicole de la Torre. She's asking, what is the most important step for the perfect rice? Um, the, the browning. Um, browning? Sure you don't, yeah, the browning. You gotta keep your eyes on it. This is ready. So follow me, Steve. Follow me. Hold on, can you let this go? So, now we're gonna do the Mexican rice. We, one cup of tomato sauce. One cup. Okay. You're gonna uh, saute for about maybe 30 seconds. And mind you, I haven't lowered my flame uh, at all during this process. Next, we're gonna add the rice. So as you can see, one got away from me. Look at that burn little piece right there, that booger. Let's get it out. I'll get it out after. They flow to the top. <laughs> so now we're working on Mexican rice. It's full flame. Uh, make sure to scrape the bottom that nothing is stuck. Okay, let's go to this one. Got another question for you, Tirsa. Um, mm -hmm. They're asking if you heat the water first before you pour in. No, I do not. And then the other question by Aurora Luna is asking, can you taste the difference between tomato paste and fresh tomatoes? Yes, actually, I'm glad you asked that. You mm -hmm. can make your own salsa de tomate 
which is what I do at home. Um, you can use, I, I, I don't know why I just prefer the canned one. I feel like the salsa de tomate that I make at home gives me excess water and sometimes messes up with my ratio to uh, rice. But you can make it, and I highly suggest that you do if you're at home, which is like uh, one tomato. For this portion, it would be one tomato, half an onion, and like two garlic. And then you put, um, you can actually add your five cups of water in there and blend it with that to make it at home. But tomato paste, I don't, I don't use tomato paste. I don't know anybody else that uses tomato paste for rice, but yeah, I don't use tomato paste hardly ever. Stick to tomato sauce. Um, all right, moving on. Our rices, we're waiting for them to boil. I'm going to season. So we're gonna put about one tablespoon of each condiment. Again, this is the vegetable base, uh, Nor Suiza. One and one to each and one tablespoon of salt to each pot, okay? I use that, that um, like nor stuff besides in my rice, but also it's great in soups. Oh yeah, totally, totally. I mean, in Latino households, we use nor, we use nor to like brush our teeth, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, we house, I use the chicken nor, um, but mm -hmm. here at the restaurant, I'm trying to, um, just have it already vegan because I don't want to have to worry about it. Okay. So again, I'm making sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom. Now we are just waiting for it to boil. See, this one's ready. This one's about to be ready, which is what I wanted. I wanted them to be to boil together so that I can't they can be done together. It's great that you're doing it vegan because, you know, vegan is the original Mesoamerican diet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think they would have put, um, like, chicken in their rice. They would have saved that, you know, for another meal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right. If you, you, if you like veggies, like, a lot, like corn or peas, this is the part you would put that in right now. So if you like corn in your rice, which my mom at home does it all the time, she puts corn, any kind of veggies you can put it in at this point if you're not this is ready to be covered it's boiling covered okay follow me steve and covered and now we are going to lower the heat as much as we can without turning it off okay and for how long will it take to cook for that it takes quantity? about it takes about 15 to 20 minutes tops okay Okay, so let me show you guys the flame. This is the flame. Well, I'm gonna put this one up a little bit more. Right there. Okay, we got a question from Marta. From Marta. What yes. happened to the garlic and onion to the tomato rice? I'm sorry? This is here, what happened to the tomato, excuse me, what happened to the garlic and onion? to the tomato rice. Did you have what? additional veggies back there or no? No. Huh. Uh, I, just, I just suggested that if people want to make their own salsa or they want to add veggies, this would be the point to do it. But if you guys want to know how to make the tomato sauce for instead of using canned tomato sauce, I think that's what she's referring to. I'm not sure exactly. Because mine has no veggies. I didn't put any onion or garlic okay. into it. I guess what happened to the rice? What happened to the garlic and onion to the tomato rice? Well, I guess everyone does their rice differently. Yes, they Some do. Some people uh, also with estilo, right? Some people do with onions, somebody do with garlic, green onions, red onions. So everybody has their own way of making their own home style. Absolutely. Home. Like I said, everybody has their own unique way of doing it, their own preferential way of doing it. Um, I don't use any of that rice. Doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't need all of that for it to be great. It's already great um, on its own. You just gotta make sure you cook it properly and make sure you have the right water ratio and make sure you're making it with love and yes, you cake. Yes. What's nice about that big quantity is that there's any leftovers. Rice freezes beautifully. So I put in the okay. little Tupperware containers, two cups. 
And because okay. I was traumatized as a child, we had rice every single day. So as okay. an adult with options, I really kind of don't do the rice, but my daughter loves rice. So I, what I do is when, once a week when she asks or when she does ask, I'll make a batch and then I'll serve her some. And then what's left over, I put in my Tupperware and it freezes amazingly in the, in the freezer. Oh. And then let's okay. say two days later, she wants rice and beans or rice with whatever. I pull it out, microwave it with a little water and a little lid on for maybe three minutes. Boom. Fresh rice. Okay. Yeah, some people some people do do that. I'm I'm kind of a rice snob where I need my fresh rice like all the time. Um, when my mom did make growing up, she would make rice, and it was rarely left over because we're such a big family, so mm -hmm. she always had to make it fresh. But whenever we did that, those seldom times that she had to reheat the rice, she would put a little bit of water in there, but mm -hmm. it just wasn't the same anymore. It wasn't arroz fresco, and I am. I love my arroz fresco. Um, it gets like a little bit, it breaks down just a little bit. It gets a yeah. little like mush, a little mush factor, which I'm like, oh, I don't know. I want my, so we yeah, were like, always bigger, make fresh rice. No, I come, I come a coffee snob. I, I oh, have okay. fresh coffee. I don't like to yeah. reheat it. Nothing it has to be fresh, fresh coffee. And I I can, have, hmm? <laughs> oh, I can drink coffee like all day. That's been sitting in the pot all day. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, here we got a, someone has a comment. Um, okay. It says, always wash the rice because of dirt, bugs, and also starch. Yeah, I don't mind the starch. Again, like I said, everybody has their own preferences. Um, we, I don't wash the rice. Um, no. If I'm making white rice, I wash the rice. But when I'm making Mexican rice, I don't, I don't wash it. So, yeah. Okay. A su manera. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding you guys i i'm receiving but um okay well so the lids are on you guys we're gonna come back in about 15 to 20 minutes but i did make backup rices already here is our backup rice this is how your rice is going to come out once you're done. If you can see just uh, look at how whole it is. It's not broken down. It's not mushy. It's nice and fluffy. And we're going to serve this with some yummy food. And then over here, we have the uh, cilantro rice, which I'm going to finish preparing now. So give me one second. Thank you. So we're going to add, it's about half a cup to a cup, depending on how much you like cilantro. Going to go in there. Follow me, Steve. I need to cut a lemon. Now we're going to cut a lemon. Follow me. Lime, lime juice. Let me get the other half. Who inspired you to cook, Dirsa? Was it um, grandma, mom? How did that all kind of roll out to be inspired? It was it was, uh, I really, from a young age, I always liked helping my mom. I would volunteer to wash dishes up until my teenage years. Um, but as a child, like a five to 10, I was always in the kitchen with my mom, just helping. And um, I just kind of liked it. And it stuck. And later on, when I realized growing up, um, my grandma was like, like a big time foodie cook back in her day. I never got to to meet her but her name was also Pirsa and she was like a hardcore cook if she would if she could have and would have had a restaurant she would have and I think her home was her restaurant but I think deep down it came she passed it down get my mom my mom did it just for fun but um she worked a lot so she didn't cook as much as her mom did I feel like I cook as much as her mom did mm -hmm. um and it's just kind of passed down I like it I like feeding people I like making their bellies happy and seeing the faces when they're when they eat something good 
So yeah, okay, here is, so I've already added my lime. Now we're just gonna fluff it. I'm not gonna roughly mix it around because I don't want to break it, so. Just gently. All right. We have a question, Tisa. Um, yes. Is there, when you're making this rice, is it a preference between lime or lemon? Um, you can. There's. I I don't think there's a wrong way when it comes to that. Um, I'll go either or. If I have either or. Lime at, okay. If I yeah, if I have lime at my house, mm -hmm. I'm gonna use lime. If I have limon at my house, I'm gonna use limon. Okay. So. Um, Lime is just what I use at the restaurant, but you can use limon or lime, either or. Mm -hmm. Remember that the secret ingredient is... Mm -hmm. So... Okay, let the folks know. So the two rices are pretty much... Follow me here. This is the cilantro rice, all done. We made this one a little while ago, and I don't add the cilantro and the lime immediately. I let it kind of rest a little bit, because if I add my cilantro too quick, it's gonna turn brown. And I want it to remain uh, vibrant and green and just pretty. So, yes. You got someone admiring your t shirt. Oh, can we, can nice. we see a full view of your t shirt of and where did you get it? Socorro Pantoja is asking. Um, I got it from a local um, small business vendor named Street Glam, and she makes all kinds of awesome shirts, and this is one of them. Great. And also we got another question here. Why don't you blend the cilantro? Um, I actually, funny story, when I, uh, when I did uh, open the restaurant, I made an all green um, mm -hmm. cilantro, uh, uh, cilantro rice. So originally my cilantro rice was all green. I would blend it with onion, ajo, and, and put it in there. But it wasn't really limey. And I'm all about the lime. So I switched it like maybe a year, a year and a half later. And mm -hmm. actually, I switched it once I made the La Plaza Bowl. Yes. Because for, La, for La Plaza Bowl, we had this rice. And I just liked it better. Um, I like the taste better. Um, I like lime, lemon, anything like that. So this has more of a citrus flavor, which is what I like. So I completely mm -hmm. stopped making the green rice for this cilantro rice, cilantro mm -hmm. lime rice, so yeah. Now what's great about your, your um, La Plaza bowl, you can make it vegetarian with chicken, yes. and now for us at home, you know, we maybe made a whole chicken on Monday, kick up some rice, put a little of that leftover chicken, a little avocado, a little salsa, and I feel when yes. you put it into a bowl, it's a different experience versus it, a flat plate. It is, I what it, it is. completely is, I agree with you, I agree. So everything's just kind of like blending together. Um, when we made it for the bowl, I mean, it had so many components. You had a mango salsa, you had delicious. platanos fritos, you had um, black beans, mm -hmm. you had the rice. So you didn't even need the chicken. It was just a bonus, but it was already mm -hmm. good as is. So um, the rice is, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm all about the rice. I want mm -hmm. fresh rice 24-7 at the restaurant for all of our guests. Because it's yeah. just plastic good. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Makes a difference when you eat your food. Every time I've gone to a Mexican restaurant, the rice is not important. It's I get crispy bits, I get overcooked bits because they reheat it in the oven. Mm -hmm. And to me, rice is one of the stars as well, if not um, the main attraction. Everything else is nice and complimentary, but I love the arroz. It's so good. So, yeah. Are you um, going to make a little bowl for us? Yes, so I was just waiting on this one, but we'll wait oh. on that. This one, as you can see, my flame is higher. This one's done. I'm going to turn it off. That's ready. Where's Question. Did you yes. use half a lime or a whole lime for your rice? I used uh, a whole lime, one whole lime. whole lime, okay. Yeah. All right, so basically, a lot of you guys uh, at home, uh, we all have leftovers. Um, there are so many ways you can make rice. I mean, you can make it in 
arroz con leche, you can make it with chicken, you can make it fried rice, you can make it brown rice, steam rice. We even have horchata, we have it in our drink. Um, but we also have leftover food. Um, here at the, uh, at the restaurant, I have different meats I already have, but if you're at home, maybe you cooked habirria or barbacoa, that doesn't finish the one day, you have it for a couple of days. Maybe you cooked some, um, maybe you did some pollo, uh, barbecue chicken or whatever. A lot of times we have leftovers. Making a new pot of rice to complement those leftovers, is so easy to do and you don't have to cook you save yourself so i'm gonna make a bowl right now because you got me hungry with the bowl and i'm gonna have steve follow me so let's go over here let's get a nice heaping spoon of rice okay and He's gonna follow me. Let's go, Steve. I prefer black beans. So I'm gonna put some black beans. Then follow me over here. By the way, in case you guys didn't notice, we're live from my restaurant right now. So yay. You guys can come visit anytime. Except for Saturdays. I sleep a lot on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I go to church on Saturdays. I don't shower on Saturdays necessarily. Just kidding. <laughs> but, okay, so I put the rice. I put the beans when it comes to a bowl. I have different cheeses to choose from. I'm gonna go with some queso fresco. Mm -hmm. Because I always have queso fresco at home. I don't necessarily have um, cheddar cheese or mozzarella. That looks amazing. Thank you. We're going to get a little bit of pico de gallo. And we're going to get some sour cream. And then, what are we feeling like? I'll ask my camera guy because he's going to eat this. <laughs> Would you like some birria or tinga, sir? Tinga, okay. We get some pinga. Okay, and we're gonna finish it. You can put, you have, I mean, uh, you can finish it with guacamole or fresh avocado. Yeah. And we're done. At, um, at my house, we always have avocado, so you can put it with that. We don't necessarily always have meat, but um, I know different households have different things. Some people ha always have platanos, which you can just fry them up really quick. We never have platanos at my house, even though I love them. Too. But um, we always have uh, like frijoles, we always have rice, we always have avocado and cheese. So rice is great for all of that. You can uh, cut up, sometimes I eat rice with just like diced up avocado in it. Some people eat it with banana. I have never done it, but it's no been banana. done. No. Um, some people eat it with ketchup. I did ketchup. I've never done ketchup. Um, <laughs> but like I said, some people do. Some people do. Um, but yeah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I got a question for you. Why do you prefer black beans? Um, as Lupe Felix Franco. I think it has to do with same. I was traumatized with Jimena. We always. <laughs> We always had beans, and I just, I don't like beans or beans. Uh, it just never, I don't know, I just never grew to love them. But black beans, I love black beans. If I wasn't Mexican, I wouldn't serve pinto beans. I would just serve all black beans. But because I'm Mexican, I have the pinto beans. But I don't, it's not my place of preference. So we always had pinto beans at home, but I just, we never bonded, so I never liked them. Moving on back to this side, this rice, this rice is done. This is the uh, Mexican rice. Some people call it Spanish rice, but mainly they call it Spanish rice because like Jimena said, the Spaniards brought it to Mexico, uh, uh, to Veracruz, 
and therefore it's up to Spanish rice. But Spanish rice is different than Mexican rice. Mexican rice uh, uses um, tomato sauce, whereas some Spanish rice will use tomato paste or saffron to get it. It's mm -hmm. like a little bit more orangey, which is, yeah. but this one, I, I guess I call it Mexican rice because I'm Mexican and this is how I make my rice. There but you um, if you are looking for different the differences, you won't find Spanish rice, which is this rice in Spain. It's going to be a little bit more um, like yellow with saffron. So, but they just named it Spanish because they brought it to us in Veracruz and it just kind of stuck that way. So, I have a commentary here from my boss, Johnny Chavez. It says he loves your keto dish. Oh, thank you. Thank so you, with thank that you. said, we're starting to put the calendar together with inviting our different chefs um, in the city. And I know I've gone there for your keto dish. I know. And so is he. So that could be another conversation. So I'm going to put you in my Rolodex and we'll look at the yes, calendar. Please. We would love to have you back. I know yes. I love your keto tacos are so good. Cheese, a cheese uh, base. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we can do so many things. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions or any, any other comments? Someone did a commentary said they were impressive. Um, that was an impressive trash can throw. Oh. Did I make it? I don't even remember. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Yeah. So far. Tell us where we can find you, who delivers, those Grubhub, do those folks come visit you? Or tell us all about it so we can bring folks and come visit your delicious food besides the keto okay. and the rice and everything else. What else is on Definitely. your menu? Uh, we actually have a rather large menu. Our menu features everything from tacos, burritos, tortas, mm -hmm. to salads, to vegan food, to keto food, um, to just overall healthy food. We, um, again, it comes from me trying to please everybody. And if I have the ingredients here and mm -hmm. it's ready to go, uh, if somebody asks for something, which is how the menu keeps growing because people keep asking, oh, do you have something keto? Oh, do you have, can I get a lettuce shell taco? Or, oh, can I get, if we have it on hand and it's already like prepared and cut, most mm -hmm. of the time we'll do it, which is why all these little extra things have come along. But um, we have, you name it, we pretty much got it. Except for, um, like, uh, we don't serve shrimp and we don't serve pork. So everything else, kind of, uh, we have it, which is why I guess I'm trying to offer more things. But you'd be surprised how many people don't eat pork. So um, I got a question. Been... Oops, sorry yeah. to interrupt. I got a question. How many cups of rice feeds 50 people? Okay, let me think. Hitting me with the mass now. Okay. I oh, know. I would say maybe six to eight cups, I would say. Mm -hmm. Six to eight cups of rice would feed around 50 people. All right. And then another thing is you got to talk about your Instagram. I love oh waking up to your Instagram because they're so positive, they're funny, you have music and cartoons, but someone else also brought up um, about your Dodger soapies. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so the Instagram is, it just comes from, I need positivity around me 24 seven because this cruel, cruel world is hard enough as it is. Um, I'm only putting out there what I need in my life to, to thrive. Um, um, needless to say, that part of me is not happy 24-7, but I am happy every day. Um, I do have bad days and good days, but I'm, I want to put out there what I want to get, and which is positivity, uh, um, love, and just all-around happiness. Even though that may not be what the day brings forth, I just try to look for that in every situation because I need it to function is, is what it comes down to at the end of the day. So... Um, yeah, that's, that's where it comes from. I want to make you guys feel good every day because it's hard enough as it is, you know? Um, it's, it's just as easy to be negative as it is to be positive, and I choose the latter. So. Just one more thing. Last time mm -hmm. we spoke, I called you. You're super busy on Thursday because you have your Thursday giveaways. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Tell us where you're located. Shout out to your Instagram, and then yes. conclude. So here's your shout out. So um, every, every Thursday, I've started to do a giveaway for um, our followers, our supporters, anybody who um, 
who follows us on IG. I do it mainly on IG. And it comes from, we desperately want to have a loyalty program for our customers, people who have supported us always. Um, I don't have many resources at my disposal. The one thing I can kind of get away with doing is giving away free food, um, which is what my husband has allowed me to do for now. But he's, he's more of the, like, he tries to, like, tighten me up. And I'm like, well, we can do it. It's part of, it's just something I want to give back and say thank you to the people who are so good to us to uh, every day. So it's kind of like our loyalty rewards program for um, all of the support. So once a week, we'll do a giveaway. It'll be something obviously that I serve here at the restaurant. And uh, I've been picking two winners for the past two weeks. I might keep it going depending on what my uh, camera guy says. But yeah, it's just our way of saying thank you and giving back with the resources that we have available, mm -hmm. which is food. So what's, what's we, your address? 701 West Caesar E. Chavez Avenue. We are here Monday through Friday. Uh, for the time being, um, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. On Saturdays, we're closed. And then on Sunday, we come back. We're here from 11 to 5. So you guys can follow us on IG. We deliver only through uh, Postmates, Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash. Uh, we don't personally deliver, but you can find us on those apps. And I think they deliver as far as five miles, if I'm not mistaken. Thank um, you. Yeah, and just follow us on IG. There's tons yes. of updates that happen weekly, daily, and we do it all for, for you guys. So again, next thank you in, so much for having us. No, thank you. It's always fun. The next time I'm in my office, last time I meant to go out and have lunch, but we got so busy being back in the office the first time after two months and picking up stuff. But always, we always think about your sopes and your tacos, and we just can't wait to get back to thank have some you. of your food as well. I can't wait to have you back. So I'm going to pass to Mr. Averaldo, our host, host, host of hostess. And, and let's not forget your breakfast burritos. Those oh, things, yeah. Those things will last uh, breakfast, lunch, and almost into dinner. Those are True. tremendous. Thank you so much. I do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jimena. Thank you, especially Tirsa. These were incredible. Uh, uh, you know, the step-by-step -step that you brought us, a little bit of a different take from what uh, is done in my household, but I've learned a lot, and I hope that our attendees also learned something from Tirsa. You could, uh, uh, her Instagram is Tirsa's under dash love. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, uh, let's see, Monday is, is our La Plaza Cocina Day. Next Monday, we're going to be off. It's Memorial Day, so we're taking the day off, but the Week after that, we have Brett Thompson from Pez Cantina, mm -hmm. a very special yes. treat. He's going to show us his agua chile with shrimp. So that's a pretty complicated dish, but I think he's going to pull it off and, and get us to give it a try as well. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of this week, pretty active. We have on Wednesday, Canciones de las Americas with Mary Alfaro Velasco and Jesus Martinez. Mary is a guitarist, singer, and music educator, and Jesus is a guitarist and a producer engineer. They're going to be singing a Noche de Bohemia on Wednesday at 7 o'clock with Boleros, Rancheras, and Wapangos and other songs of the Americas. Okay, uh, you, You're not going to believe it. Uh, Jesus has a studio that he, they're going to be recording out of or, or presenting live out of, and they're going to, of course, keep their social distancing of being six feet apart but it's gonna be an incredible performance on Wednesday. Then finally on Friday, I know we all need some motivation to get through these times. Sometimes we might get a little down, but food helps, of course, as we know, but also maybe a little bit of comedy, a little bit of uh, empowerment from Ernie G, who is billed as an empowerment comedian. He chronicles his journey from comedy stages to high schools, college campuses, corporate TEDx talks, beyond, to help us get through these times to, for self-empowerment and purpose. We have a lot of other things coming up uh, throughout the, the weeks. En Casa Con La Plaza isn't just a momentary thing. This is our fourth week. We're gonna continue on even when we begin our programming back at La Plaza. We, of course, are really waiting for us to open the doors to welcome you back in but for now and forever forever we're going to be presenting en casa con la plaza so we thank you very much for joining us our today's session will be 
uh, is being archived on our YouTube page, on our website, lapca.org, on Facebook, in our videos. Just click on videos and you'll see all of our archived uh, sessions with Gustavo, with the librarians uh, sing, doing some book reading, with, uh, with a Loteria session from Gloria Arjona. We try to bring it all to you and we have some exciting guests and performances coming up in the weeks to come. So thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jimena. Thank, oh, thank you, you. Tirsa. And we can't Tirsa. wait, can't thank wait you. to go, get, go to Tirsa's there on the corner of Cesar Chavez and? Brand. And Brand, really uh, right across from the, from the high school <laughs> of cool. performing arts. All right, well, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you soon. Uh, check us out next week. And we'll, from Aurora, real quick, muchas gracias por compartir. Uh, thank you for the host and the co-host. And thank you to La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, John Echeves, and the rest of the staff working hard to keep the culture going. All right, bye-bye. Ciao.